A viewer sent me an email saying that she just acquired some large tools like a table saw and was wondering what suggestions I would have for smaller marking and measuring tools to help her make quality projects on those larger tools that she acquired. So here are some of my suggestions. I think a quality combo square is one of the most important tools that you can have, but not all squares are created equally. If the tool that you're using to check for square is not actually square, your projects are going to be all sorts of wonky and it's going to get frustrating real quick. So here's how to test to see if your square is actually square. Simply line it up on a straight edge and make a line with a pencil. Flip the square over onto the other side and make another line. If your square is actually square, these lines should overlap. Here's a square from a place that rhymes with barber plate. Let's take bets on whether or not this square is actually square. Make a line, flip over, make another line. You can see clearly that those two lines do not overlap, which means that this square is not square. So which squares do I like? This star at square is my go-to. I always know that this one is going to be accurate and it's always going to tell me any stock is square or a perfect 45 degree angle. And when I lock the wheel, I know that that ruler is going to stay in place so I can transfer accurate measurements for things like dados and stock thickness. I also just recently got this square from Capro and it's way less expensive than the Starrett and the ruler holds into place using magnets instead of that like locking wheel. I think that this is really cool, but I wouldn't use this for super accurate projects like things that I need something to be so precise. I use it just for quick little setups because I am just a little concerned that just like by knocking it a little bit, the ruler will come out of place. But um, I think this is really cool because well, magnets. <laughs> so I think it's important to have multiple squares, multiple combo squares. You should have a big one like this or a small six inch or four inch one like this for smaller little things. Also, if you have multiple settings for a project, like multiple settings at the router table or multiple reveals going on with the table legs, it's really awesome to have multiple squares set to different settings and that will help your work be more accurate because you don't have to keep changing the settings on all of these things. Also, if you're like me and you can never find anything, it is useful to have a bunch of these around. So besides for the square being actually square, what do you wanna look for in a square? A good quality square will have etched markings instead of stamped markings. And you might notice that this star square is a bit rusty. And a lot of you have commented about it on previous videos, so today I'm going to finally do something about it. Working in an uninsulated garage means that me and all of my tools are exposed to the elements. That means I'm cold and my tools get rusty. So normally I like to prevent the rust from happening to begin with by using some WD-40 specialist corrosion inhibitor but we're all human and sometimes I forget to do these things. So I don't wanna mess with the accuracy of this square. This is my favorite square and I know that it's really accurate and great. So I don't want to have to scrub it, a chance of removing any metal and then causing it not to be square anymore. First I'll spray it with some WD-40 specialist degreaser just to remove any grease, oil, dirt, or adhesives that are stuck on there. Now this is going to remove the rust without any toxic fumes or caustic chemicals and it takes about one to three hours for it to start working on light rust like this. So um, maybe I'll need to leave it for more than that. I don't know, this is going to be a good test to see how long it's going to take. I'll set a timer right now. And as I set this off to the side, we could talk about some other tools. So combo squares are great for marking and measuring your projects. Machina squares are great for tool setup. Once again, I have a few of these in different sizes and each one of these can do different things also. I love this little DFM square because it's small enough to fit into your pocket or your apron if you wear one, but it also does double duty as a center finder. Just put these two pins in place, twist it around the board and run it along the board with a pencil in place to quickly and accurately mark the center of it. I also find this little guy handy to use as a saddle square to transfer lines from one side to the other like this. 
Another great square from DFM is their small carpenter square. So I'm not sponsored by DFM at all, but I have met the owner of the company. He's a cool guy. And um, they're also made in the US, which I think is pretty cool. And they're really high quality products. Besides for using it to set up tools or mark for cross cuts using this lip on the bottom, it also has these small holes every 16th of an inch. So you can scribe accurate lines with a pencil just like this and these larger holes, you can place a pin in them to accurately mark out key angles. It's a really cool little square, especially when you want those exact angles. So while we're talking about angles, a sliding bevel gauge is totally necessary once you start adding a lot of angles into your work. This just fully adjusts to any angle that you need and it just locks into place and you don't even need to know the angle that you're working with. It just adjusts to anything that you need and then you lock it into place. But if you do want a specific angle, you can get this bevel setting gauge. All you have to do is adjust your sliding bevel to the line that notes the degree that you want and then just lock it into place. But I actually don't like this one because the wing nut protrudes out from the side. I can only lay it on a flat surface in one direction and I can't flip it over this way. This wing nut just gets in the way and it's kind of annoying. So I'm going to link to one where the locking mechanism is on the bottom over here so that it never gets in the way and that you can use it on either side. Okay, so there are a ton of other tools that I use that are not necessary at all, but they're really great and really helpful, like this Incra T-square. So this is just like that uh, DFM square that has the holes in it every 16th, except there are more of them. This one has holes for every 16th, 32nd, and 64th, so you can get crazy accurate with this thing, but you need to use a good mechanical pencil that's going to fit into those holes in order to use it the right way. So a pencil and these kind of tools are great for most machine woodworking, but when it comes to hand tool woodworking, I prefer to use a marking knife. I have tried a few different marking knives, but I've recently just found my favorite. This is the Mikov dual bevel marking knife. And what makes this knife so great is this large flat area on the back here. So let's say I want to do an inlay. I wanna put a piece of wood into another piece of wood. So I have a few choices for marking knives, like this one over here, it has bevels on both sides of it. So what you have to do when using one of these kind of knives is you actually have to hold the marking knife at an angle in order for it to cut in the right spot. So look, if I hold it straight, there's actually a space, a gap between the wood and where I want to put that inlay. So it's gonna be super gappy if you do it that way. So you're gonna have to hold this at an angle. And a few things can happen there. You can cut away at the bottom of your wood. You can actually undercut it a little bit so that you're marking a little bit smaller than what you actually need. And then it's not gonna be a good fit and you're gonna get frustrated. Or you can actually ruin your wood as you're marking. It could like ride up the piece and things will get ruined. So I like to use a knife that has a flat back that way you just have to hold it with the flat part against the wood. And this one actually has like a little indent in there. So you hold it like this and you can put pressure on it. So it's just really comfortable to hold and mark. And this makes for really accurate marking, really, really good. And I love how long this flat part is as opposed to one like this, um, this one also has a flat back to it, but it's not as long. So this can reach into like deeper areas. So I really love this knife. I, this has been my go-to for my past couple of projects. So you can buy this marking knife ready to go, ready to use for like 20 bucks and it's great. But you know what's really awesome? You can also buy just the blades and you can make it yourself. Like you just have some scrap wood. It comes with the brass pins and all you need to use is just some epoxy to glue some scrap onto the blades and you'll make your own marking knife. I think this is such a fun little project and I'm definitely going to be making a few of these just to have them lying around because I absolutely love that marking knife and I can't ever seem to find anything. So might as well just have a few of them lying around. So. I think that marking knives are just way more accurate when you're working with hand tools because it creates a line 
for your chisel to go into and it creates something to work up to. Another great marking tool is this wheel marking gauge. So these are great for mortise and tenon and dovetails and you can buy them just like this and they're not too expensive. But you know what's really cool? You can actually make your own. So there are these kits. Just like the marking knives, it comes with everything that you need to make the wheel marking gauges. And I was going to make one for this video, but then my buddy Jonathan Katzmoses put out a video on how to make these. So if you're interested in learning how to make one of these wheel marking gauges, I'm gonna drop a link down to his video down below. Check it out, it's a really fun project and I think it could be an excellent gift to give to a woodworking friend. So the next tool that I think is totally essential and I use on every single project, so simple, a scratch all. So what do I use this for? I use this to mark out where I'm going to drill holes. So like you'd say, why not just use a pencil? So drill bits tend to wander. So if you use something pointy to mark where the bit is going to go, the bit will want to follow down into that hole and then your holes are going to be the most accurate that they could possibly be. When drilling, I also try not to use regular twist bits. I try to use brad point bits or Forstner bits, and that way the tip of that bit will always go into the hole that was made by the awl, and the holes are going to be placed perfectly every single time. Want to see a cool trick? <laughs> so let's say I want to put a mortise in the center of this board. What I would typically do is drill most of the waste out with a Forstner bit and then clean it up with a chisel afterwards. But remember, drill bits tend to wander. So how do I make sure that that drill bit is always going to go in the correct spot and it won't go over my marking lines? So I quickly use the awl as a marking knife with one of my squares to make an indent along the length of the mortise. This way, the tip of the bit is going to fall into that groove anywhere I place it and the holes will be drilled in the correct spot. Some squares actually have a scratch all built into them just for this purpose. All right, time to check in on how my favorite square is doing. So it's been about three hours and it's looking pretty good. I could see there's some areas, oh, that's like rubbing right off. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'll take this um, non-abrasive scratch pad and I'll just, oh yeah, okay, this is totally gonna work. Oh yeah, okay. So um, this is not removing any of the metal from the, actual, uh, from the actual ruler, but it's taking off all this like black stuff um, that was on top of it. And now you can see the difference from where I was scrubbing that. Oh, this is so awesome. I'm so happy. I just went inside and rinsed it off with some water and now I'll dry it completely before putting on some WD-40 specialist corrosion inhibitor. What's cool about the rust remover soak is that it's actually reusable. I could reuse all this liquid. I'm just going to store it in a separate container and you'll know that it's no longer usable when it turns black. But hopefully I won't have to use it too much because I'm going to remember to take care of my tools so you guys don't have to comment on it anymore. Maybe next up I'll actually fix the lattice on my deck. There are a ton of other marking and measuring tools that I love. This tape happens to be my favorite because it has the 16th clearly marked on it. It also has this area where you can write on it with a pencil and erase it. And my memory is just horrible. <laughs> so this is awesome to be able to write down your measurements so that you don't forget them. Uh, this large compass comes in really handy when you're doing things like circles. And these um, calipers come in really handy when you're doing things like dovetails. And oh these digital calipers. So you guys have seen me use this in my videos a ton. I love to use this. This is awesome for getting outside measurements here and also inside measurements on this end. So what's also really cool about this is after you get your measurement, you lock it into place and you can actually use it to as a marking knife. So you could just like run it, oh, you run it along your piece like that and it makes a mark for the thickness that you just took. So this part over here marks like the inside of something. Like if you're wanting to measure how wide 
your miter slots are to make some miter bars for a crosscut sled. And this part over here, it goes up and down. So that's what you can use to measure like the depth of the miter slot. So this has a lot of functionality to it. And I love to use this. You see, I've, it's very well used. I've lost the battery cover, but it still works out great. Um, so while all of these tools come in handy for me, you definitely do not need all of these tools to make cool projects. You can get started without any of these. Well, I think you need a square, but you can get started without most of these and still make really cool projects. But once you start to take woodworking seriously and you really want to up the quality of your work, I think these tools will help you get there. So I hope this answered some questions out there that you guys might have had. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to WD40 and Woodcraft for sponsoring this video. Happy holidays and I'll see you on the next one. Why do the leaf blowers have to start as soon as I press record? <laughs>